In this video, we're going to further our understanding of Lewis dot structures by drawing the structures of ozone and the nitrate ion. Let's get started with ozone. Ozone is this molecule, and uh, it has this shape, three oxygen atoms, and then there's going to be one central and two terminal. Uh, as always, we always uh, begin with uh, uh, counting the number of balanced electrons that we have available. Okay, oxygen is uh, uh, helium, 2s2, 2p4 electronic configuration, so that is 6 valence electrons per atom. That means that we're going to have a total of 18 valence electrons uh, for this structure. All right. Uh, we draw bonds between the terminal and the central atom, and uh, there's two electrons per bond. So that means that I have 14 valence electrons left over after drawing these single bonds. Well, uh, then what we do is uh, uh, use these 14 valence electrons that we have left over, and then we place them as lone pairs uh, in the terminal atoms first, and then if there's anything left over, we go to the central atom. All right, so we start with the uh, terminal atoms. You have here two, four, six, and then two, four, six. Okay, notice that we can put more than three lone pairs uh, around each of the terminal oxygen atoms because that completes the octet. Uh, right, so we have here uh, 6 and 6, 12. Uh, that means that we still have two electrons left over, and those two electrons that are left over are going to go to the central oxygen atom. Okay, uh, now that we have all of the valence electrons uh, put in place, uh, then what we do is uh, try to verify if we have octets for all of the atoms uh, in the structure. And then we see that yes, the terminal atoms have an octet, okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. And the central atom has two, four, six. So sex that we actually uh, are missing two electrons in the central atom, right? So uh, then uh, we figured out how we can complete the octet for the central atom without uh, jeopardizing the octets of the terminals. All right. So there's a, a, a here. You actually have two different possibilities, right? You can say that well, this terminal atom uh, is going to take one of these lone pairs and then place it as a double bond here. Right, so that will respect the octet of the terminal atom and produce an octet for the central. But notice that the exact same, uh, exact same uh, situation can happen if the uh, atom to the left, the terminal atom to the left, uh, does the same procedure. So, so notice how you can reach the octet using two different strategies, okay, which could in a place uh, right here. Right? One of them would be as follows. Okay, we take one of the lone pairs of this terminal atom and form here a double bond. Okay, notice that in this case, you do have an octet for the three atoms, okay, uh, and then uh, the other possibility would be that you have the following. Okay, so this atom is not donating the lone pair uh, to generate the octet, instead is the, this terminal atom that is. Okay, notice that we have now uh, octets for each one uh, of the three atoms in the structure. Now notice that uh, the probability that uh, each one of these two structures uh, is a real one is actually the same, right? There's no no reason that should be more prevalent than that. Okay, so uh, when you have these uh, uh, loose that structures uh, that can be possible, uh, they're called resonant structures. Okay, and we usually uh, uh, denote resonant structures by using this double-headed uh, arrow. Uh, right here between the structures, and then uh, essentially what this represent is is uh, uh, extreme uh, Lewis dot structures uh, uh, in reality, right? Uh, and then again, what happens in reality is that uh, you will have an average between those two, right? So if you were to look at ozone in reality, uh, as it happens in nature, what you will find is that you don't have that or that. You don't have this 50% of the time and that 50% of the time. Instead, what you actually have is an equal average, right? An average of the two resonant structures. So then uh, uh, you can try to dream up how this structure might look like, and, and uh, uh, this is not necessary, but it's interesting for the purpose of illustration, right? You can say that, well, uh, uh, what we have in here is that you're going to have that on average, right? You will have, uh, uh, you know, something between a single bond and a double bond, which would be uh, a 1.5 bond in between those two atoms. Right? And then uh, you can complete the octet here. It's, it's hard to put here lone pairs, but again, a question that we, can, that we can definitely answer is that, well, 
you know, how many bonds are you going to have in between the uh, two oxygen atoms? And you will say it's not going to be one or two, it's going to be an average of those, so it will be about a, a one of, uh, or, or you're going to have 1.5 bonds. Okay? All right, so again, these are the uh, Lewis dot structures for ozone, and you have two resonance structures that satisfy all of the rules. Okay? And again, this introduces the concept of the resonance uh, structures in Lewis dot structures. Uh, let's do one more example, which is going to be the nitrate ion, and see uh, what we learn from there. All right, so nitrate is a polyatomic ion, which has this equation, this formula. Okay, so uh, I'll just count how many valence electrons we have, and then see if we can draw here the Lewis dot structure. All right, so uh, each of the oxygens has six valence electrons, so there will be 18. The nitrogen is a 2s2, two 2p3, two, two uh, so that is five valence electrons. Uh, 5 plus 18 is 23, and then we have one negative charge that adds one electron, so that is a total of 24 uh, valence electrons. Great. All right, we draw the molecule, and nitrogen is going to be at the center, and the oxygen atoms are all going to be terminal. Okay. And then we use these 24 electrons to place uh, a bond between those atoms, and then complete the octets using lone pairs. All right, so drawing the first bonds, that is six electrons, so I have 18 remaining. And then I place them around the terminal atoms. That is six, that is six, six. All right, so that consumes uh, all of our remaining balanced electrons. Now, uh, we try to verify if uh, the atoms all have octets. And we see that the terminal atoms, those oxygens, all have octets. But the nitrogen nat atom only has six electrons, so two, four, and six. Right, so something has to happen in order for uh, uh, that structure to be a true uh, a satisfying uh, nitrate structure. Okay? We can't forget that all this has a negative charge, and we usually lose the structures with the note that with brackets in the entire structure and then the charge here in the upper right corner. Right, so we still have to uh, figure out how to complete that octet, and you have various possibilities matching awesome. Notice that uh, any of the three oxygen atoms can actually decide to uh, take a lone pair right there and form a double bond that would respect the octet in oxygen and then complete the octet for nitrogen. But again, you have three possibilities, right? That can happen as well, and that can happen as well. So naturally, you, you would expect here to find three resonant structures, all of which satisfy uh, the octet rule, and all of, all of which uh, you have to take into consideration. All right, so let's try to draw them in turn. This will be one of them. Okay, two, four, six. Okay, notice that this resonance structure satisfy the output for all of the atoms. Okay, but is equally likely as, or is equally likely to this uh, other resonance structure in which the double bond is not with the uh, lower left oxygen atom. It's going to be with the lower right oxygen atom. All right, so two, four, six, two, four, six. Okay, and then we have the last one, which is going to be a double bond with the top atom. Here we go, two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four. And every atom in each one of the structures satisfies the, the octaves here. Now, uh, these double-headed arrows here don't, uh, uh, this doesn't mean that the structure evolves from here to there to there. This is not a dynamic equilibrium in which the double bond is kind of flipping around in between those oxygen atoms. That is not what this is indicating. This is simply indicating that these structures uh, are all three likely. And as a matter of fact, you can see that the three of them are actually equally likely, right? So if you were to ask, the, uh, uh, try to answer the question, of, well, how many bonds are really there, uh, uh, there are between the oxygen and nitrogen atom, you would say, well, uh, if I take an average of this, I see that, uh, uh, well, I have a single bond uh, in two of the structures and a de double bond uh, in the other structure for each one of the atoms, right? So that would, be, that would mean that on average, I have a bond of, or I have 1.33 bonds between nitrogen and oxygen, right? So that would be uh, a kind of the ideal representation of the type of bond that you have between nitrogen and oxygen in reality for the nitrate ion. Okay, so in this video we have drawn the Lewis dot structures for ozone and nit uh, nitrate ion, and then we have introduced the concept of resonance structures.